Now, please welcome Steve Gooding, who's um, director of the REC Foundation. Thank you. Um, well, I thought that when the Chancellor said uh, what he said last uh, week, which Steve has picked up on, that it made our jobs uh, a lot easier because we could just say no uh, and move straight on. Um, but I thought it might just be worth reading into the record here for those of you who haven't picked it up, uh, what the Chancellor said on Monday of this week to the Treasury uh, Select Committee, which is, and I quote, there will still be a role for the private sector in partnership with the public sector in financing and delivering some of the road projects that we've got, but only when it can be demonstrated that we meet the two crucial tests, value for money for the taxpayer and appropriate transfer of risk. And I thought this was particularly interesting because I had a quick flick back through uh, the record and I found uh, the same thing was said by John Major when he was Chancellor uh, in 1989 and the same thing was said by Norman Lamont when he was Chancellor and I could trace these words back to the Ryrie rules. Can anyone in the room remember the Ryrie rules? Possibly not. So the rules developed in the early 1980s when private finance was still but a gleam in the eye and I think what I would say from the foundation perspective is, is there a role? Maybe, but it's not easy. And you just heard six things that might change uh, the way that the, the issue is thought about, but let's think for a moment about why it's not easy to get private finance into road schemes, whether they be road schemes for building new capacity entirely, or whether they're about maintaining and stewarding the network. One of the problems is can you separate the particular project from the rest of the network? Steve mentioned the challenge there with the Stonehenge Tunnel. The last thing, Highways England, the last thing the government, certainly the last thing that the uh, local authorities running the highways uh, in Devon want, is for people to decide to choose to use the motorway route rather than the Stonehenge Tunnel simply because they'd be avoiding a charge for using it. So we have to think about how people, how traffic will react, but of course how traffic reacts is a matter of how people react to the choices in front of them. Now for many years there was a policy in this country of tolling estuarial crossings. There could be no doubt that making it a lot easier to get across the Thames at Dartford, to get across the Severn, uh, and to get across other places, you are saving people an immense amount of time and chances are they will be happy to pay for that huge saving. The diversion was not really a sensible option for them and a project could be scoped and delivered by a private sector entity. And I think we're all pretty happy with the way, for example, the Queen Elizabeth II Bridge was deliver delivered at Dartford in a package with the existing tunnels by Trafalgar House. But when we think about how people feel about paying for road use, and again, as Steve has touched on some of this, the vast, huge majority of the road network is something we've rather got used to having as being free at the point of use. I don't think it is quite the last free utility because I would liken it to the NHS with a similar challenge, that if something is free at the point of use, people will tend to use it until the queues start to form then they will complain about the queues, and then what do we do? Can we add to capacity? And I look at some of the schemes, I look at most of the schemes in Jim O'Sullivan's list, and yes, there are some genuinely new connections there, but an awful lot of the Highways England program is about adding to capacity on the line of route. So if you ask me, if you ask the average motorist, I'm adding to capacity on, say, the M23. I'm, I'm turning it into an all-lane running. There'll be an extra lane for everyone. How do you feel about paying for it? Unfortunately, quite a lot of us would feel like we might just use the A23 instead and cause that traffic problem. Putting a charge on something that hasn't been charged before is really very hard. And that leads me to my uh, penultimate point, which is, again, picking up something that Steve said. It is possible, though I'm not quite the enthusiast that he is, it's possible that we could see a different form of charging for road use, I'm going to call it a tax, a different form of tax coming in as the income from fuel duty ebbs away. 
And it's possible in that world, and I'm thinking it's probably 2030 or beyond, because that's my suspicion, but it's possible in that world that we will see that, char that tax being treated as a charge for use, and perhaps either in the same way that there's hypothecation uh, for Highways England's budget from vehicle excise duty, which we know now, that there might be some form of, of direct remuneration, which is much more like a charge. And at that point, you could consider privatization as we've seen with other utilities, and then you can have genuine private investment remunerated through user charges with probably some form of regulation to make sure that's okay. The last point I just wanted to put in here is whenever we think about road investment, certainly I speak for myself here, I tend to think about civil engineering. I tend to think about the carriageway. But we also need to be thinking about some of the investment that's going to come along in future years. I heard this morning both I heard the minister, I heard Elliot Shaw, I heard Jim O'Sullivan all talking about the extent of digital services that they're anticipating uh, deploying across the Highways England network. Many local authorities are looking at what, to, what uh, complex traffic control systems they might want to invest in in the future. And I think we also need to ask ourselves, it's not just about the fixed, the civil infrastructure. Maybe there's a role for private finance and some of that technology though I fear some of the problems I've sketched out already would still have to be sorted. Thank you.